Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and I'm really excited to show you a traditional project. Um, this is a great project if you're a true beginner and it's also a fun project if you're a veteran of crocheting for many years. I didn't realize how much fun these were to make. I sat down to make one for the YouTube video and I ended up making three. Okay, let me tell you what I'm using for this. I'm using the Parfait Layers. Um, this is available at, uh, I found nine at AC Moore, and they may be at other stores, and I know they're certainly online. I'm not being paid to promote this or anything, but I just really like the texture. It feels really, really soft, and it's wonderful for baby blankets. And it's self-striping, so there's no color changes. And I wanted to show you some of the colors that I made with this. This is a blue. And this is the one I'll be crocheting in the video for you. And this is actually a smaller baby blanket, I, just some leftovers I had from another project. And just really love the way the colors kind of come out on that. And this is a special one I made for my daughter, who requested this color for her doll. So, um, really, really fun project. Um, easy project. And also, something special about this, oh, i got a string to hide there. Um, uh, one thing that's really special and nice about this project is that it's a continuous granny square. This is a, a technique that I just learned recently, even though I've been crocheting for, for decades. And if you look at it closely, you're not going to see any, any you know, line of turning chain in this project. And that makes it even more fun. So you have the same side facing all the way around. There's no turning. There's no, no joins. Um, Nothing really unseemly about this at all. It's a lot of fun, just continuous crochet. And well, anyway, let's go ahead and get started and let's make one of these together. For this project, you're going to need one cake or scan of the Parfait layers. This is a premier yarn. Um, it's a really nice, has a velour soft feeling to it. It has 459 yards, which will be about what we're going to use. And this is a bulky weight yarn. Now, if you don't have something like this on hand, don't worry. This this project can work up just as well with the worsted weight yarn, um, although it probably won't be quite as soft. Um, I'm also going to be using a size K crochet hook or a 6.50 millimeter in size. And I'm also recommending that you have a yarn needle to hide uh, loose strands, which will only really have one or two and I have a pair of scissors on hand. Okay, let's go ahead and begin. To begin, I'm gonna start with a slip knot and I'm gonna be a little more deliberate and slow as I show this because I know there may be some uh, true beginners watching this project. Okay, for the slip knot, I just push away, turn like this, and then take the yarn that's connected to my ball of yarn and pull it through. And then give it just a gentle tug and a gentle tug again so that the yarn is the size of the crochet hook and we're going to chain four and I reach over with the yarn over the back and just pull through four times three and four now this might this part might get a little bit tricky if you're a true beginner but if uh, but just hang in there it's very doable we're going to work what they call a slip stitch and all that all you do for this is you stick I want you to stick the hook in the very first chain that you made and then pull the yarn through and then pull the yarn through again and then you should have like a little donut here or a little cheerio we're going to chain three and now we're going to work a double crochet and we're going to work them all right into the center here okay and we we do that as we wrap the hook we stick the hook into the hole pull up a loop yarn over Pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We're going to do that one more time. Yarn over, go right into that donut hole, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we're making uh, the beginning of the granny square, and so we're going to chain two, and for every chain two that we make in this particular round, that is going to be forming a corner in the future. All right, now we're going to wrap the hook and we're going to do three more double crochets going right through the middle. One, do yarn over, insert hook, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through two, 
yarn over, pull through two. Do that three times. Okay, now we're going to do that again. Chain two, and then we're going to work three more double crochets, just going right into the center where we've been going. And chain two again. And we're going to do it one more time, and you'll see the corners once I finish this round. One, two, three. And then we're going to chain two again. And we're going to do another slip stitch, but we're going to do it to the very top of that first chain that we made. Put the hook in, pull the yarn through. And pull the yarn through. Okay. Now, this is the only time that we're actually going to turn. Okay, we're going to turn. We're going to chain three, one, two, three, and we're going to begin making the corners more defined. And this is how we do that. We're going to working in this big open two chain space here. We're going to work two double crochets, and I'll explain why we only do two right now. The reason is this chain three actually serves as a double crochet. It looks like a double crochet, even though it's just a chain. But as far as the space and everything, it takes the, the place of another double crochet. Okay, we chain two. Now we're going to work three more double crochets in the same space where we just worked the other two. Okay, just like that. And now we have, this is what we would call a corner. Wherever you have a multiple or two of these double crochet clusters and a chain two, that's gonna be the corner. Now we're just gonna chain one and we're going to work the same thing, almost the same thing in this next corner here. We're gonna work three double crochets Then a chain two, one, two, and then three more double crochets in that same space. Okay, so now we have two corners made. I'm going to chain one and we're going to make another corner. We're going to go, we are skipping all of these double crochets here and we're going right to the space here. For the well for this entire project we're going to be working in the spaces in between what I'm going to call the double crochet clusters which is three double crochets together chain two and then three more in that same space this is the only round that's going to be quite like this now we have one more corner to do I'm going to chain one and I'm going to Work three double crochets, again, working in that next chain two space. Chain two, and then three more double crochets. Oops. And so far, this is what you should have. Okay, now this is where the traditional granny square is different from what I'm going to show you with this continuous granny square. With the continuous granny square, you're not going to have to do any more turning and you will not have to stop and join and, and therefore leave this line in your work. This avoids all of that. And this is how we do that. Okay, after we completed this um, last corner here, we're going to chain one. Now we are going to work a cluster in this chain space right here. So instead of joining with the slip stitch, we're actually going to work three double crochets in this space. Just like this. Okay, and after we do that, we're going to chain one 
Now we are going to work continuously around and there's some very specific directions on how to do this. And that is every time you come to a corner like this, you must work a corner, which would be two, actually three double crochets. You're gonna make two clusters in this corner. Okay, three double crochets, chain two, and then three more double crochet so that you keep it looking like a corner. Okay, so there really are like two clusters, two DC clusters and the chain two. So, and then you chain one, and then when you get to a place that's not a corner, you simply work three double crochets. Okay, and then we chain one in between. Now we've gotten to a corner here. So I'm gonna go ahead and work another corner. There are a lot more corners earlier on in this project as you um, as your square gets bigger your blanket gets bigger then the corners become well much more infrequent okay but it's very important that you pay attention to where you are and when you come to that corner that you do two of the clusters divided by the chain two okay now we chain one and then there's just this is not a corner, so we're just going to crochet three double crochets. Okay, chain one, and we've come to another corner. So we go ahead and crochet the three double crochets. I know I'm moving kind of fast here on these double crochets. I don't want that to scare you, um, but it's the same stitch that we've been doing, the yarn over hook in pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Once you've done this a few million times, or even just a few thousand times, it's amazing how quickly your muscle memory will pick up on this and you won't even have to think about it. Okay, then chain one in between spaces. And again, we come to the next space. We just work three double crochets there. Chain one, come to another corner. We've almost made another round. So we have in this corner, we're going to work three double crochets, chain two, and then three more double crochets. This yarn is nice and smooth. It's um, it doesn't have a lot of friction, so it doesn't really hurt the hands like some of the, the, the thicker yarn can do. Okay, now we're getting, gonna chain one. We're getting close to our repeat. Do you see where we started this here? And I promise you, once this baby blanket gets to be really large, this is gonna be almost unnoticeable. Okay, so now we just work in the spaces. Three double crochets in that space chain one and then we just keep going okay now we're going to have see there's another space here we just work three double crochets in that space chain one and for the double gonna, um, for the corner here we're going to do two clusters and the chain two as you remember chain two and then three more. So honestly, this is pretty much it. I'm gonna chain one. Let me show you one more cluster. Okay, let's let's step back and take a look at what we're doing. Okay, so we are just going around and around. And one thing nice about this is except for this first stitch, this first um, round, everything is gonna have the same side of the double crochet showing. Okay, so what I want you to do is just to continue this all the way around until you've used up um, most of the yarn. You're going to want to, you're going to have to estimate how much we're going to need on that last round, and it's going to be a lot. If you're using the parfait, I would um, go until you have maybe one or two of the color changes left so that we have enough for the final um, round. 
but um, I'll go ahead and I'm going to continue this and then I'll show you what it looks like once I get to my first color change. Okay, I've worked several rounds and I wanted to show you what I have at this point. Okay, now this yarn is just so nice and squishy. I wish I wish you could feel it. Um, and it's really nice to work with. And one thing I really like about this is that the color change is barely noticeable. I'm just going to let this be here. Can you see it? The color change took place in the yarn itself right here. I didn't have to tie any knots or anything. And I just point that out because as each of these color changes happen, it's really not even going to be noticeable. Okay, so I'm just going to um, have you continue on with the same working three double crochets in a chain one, you know, in in these holes here. Make sure if you make sure that you always crochet three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets in all the corners to keep the square. And I will show you what I have once I get to the point where I want to begin my final round. Okay, I've completed 19 rounds. That's including the very first round that started here. I just wanted to show you just how these colors just flow into each other. You can see where the color changed here. It seems a bit obvious, but when actually you lay this out and you look at the entire project, it's barely noticeable. So now I have come to the last color change. Let me show you. It's kind of hard to see. I have, I have this much yarn. This is the last color remaining on the the scan here and I believe it's enough to finish this last um, this last round that's going to differ from what we've been doing now um, this is kind of um, experimental as far as when to stop and I know each of these scans can be a little bit different if there's just a tiny bit left of the color you're probably going to have to go the last two colors that remain in the scan and, and begin this last round um, or you may even have to, you know, give it a try. And if you run out of yarn, then, you know, take out just one of these, one of these rounds and then begin what I'm about to show you um, one round sooner. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so there's a little bit of a problem here with this connection. I'm going to go ahead and just give it a little trim okay that's a little bit better okay so I am just in the middle of my row and it honestly doesn't matter where you start this um, you can even start it in a corner um, but this is what you're going to do so now we're going to start with the blue I'm going to go into the middle of this cluster and through the top and I'm just going to do a slip stitch just like that to anchor this stitch. Now I'm going to work four double crochets in this hole. Remember we were working three before but we're going to be doing a small shell all the way around. So I make four double crochets and then I'm going to do a slip stitch in the second or the middle stitch just like that. And we're going to do this all the way around. I'm going to do four double crochets. I'm going to move this yarn out of the way so it's not disturbing us. Three and four. Okay, and then we're going to anchor it with a slip stitch. Again, Just hook in, pull loop through, and pull loop through. Okay, I'm going to do this all the way until I get to the first corner and then I'll show you how to do that corner. Okay, I'll just anchor this one for you, four double crochets and then a slip stitch. When you get to the corners, we're going to do the same thing by anchoring with a slip stitch in that middle double crochet and then after that you're going to work seven double crochets in this corner to give it a nice you know, curve effect. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then follow that 
with a slip stitch in that third double crochet and then continue on with working four double crochets in each space until you get to the next corner and go ahead and do this all the way around and I'll show you the final join at the end of this project. Just wanted to show you what your corner should look like. Okay, before I show you the last join, full disclosure, I had to pull out some of the stitches because I didn't have enough of the blue to make it all the way around. So what I did is I estimated and I actually pulled out just one side of the square. You don't have to pull out a complete round since we're not joining um, these rounds, which makes this really convenient. So I had to use some white on these shells but you know honestly this is fine the baby's gonna love it nonetheless and it'll probably be a little more interesting for a baby's eyes to look at and to study as they you know hold and, and carry this blanket with them so anyway this is the last three double crochet cluster that we crochet and then remember then we began with our slip stitch and then our first four double crochet shell okay well this is the last um, shell that I worked and so instead of putting the slip stitch in the center I'm going to bring it all the way over here and I'm actually going to connect it to the first double crochet of that first shell yes it's going to be a little bit of a stretch but you know what this is still going to work out just fine so do a slip stitch and then do a chain one give it a pull I'm going to get my scissors and cut the thread Okay, and then just pull this on through. I just want to show you just how nicely that, that does connect in. It's not really that noticeable. And I'm going to show you one more thing before I go. I'm going to show you how to hide this loose strand in such a way that you'll never see it again. And the beauty of, of these yarns that are all connected and they have the color changes built in is that there really are only going to be two actually just one strand to hide okay so i'm going to go down i'm going to actually turn with the back side facing not that there really is a front or back to these but um, i'm going to try to hide this kind of bury it deep into the blue yarn i don't want to try to hide it under the white because it'll it'll you know stick out like a sore thumb so i'm going to just run it under the stitches just like that Okay, now I could just trim it there, but you know what? I like to I like to leave long, uh, hide a lot of the the yarn, especially for a baby blanket, because I know how abused these things can be, and you know carried throughout the house and and, and everything. So I'm going to hide it under two shells, just going under all the stitches, just like this. Give it a tug. I'm going to pull back just like that. Just make sure that. Um, it's comfortably hidden in there and then I'm going to clip the yarn close but not too close to my other stitches because I don't want to make the mistake of cutting you know the other stitches that could be a really big problem okay so and there is one more string which actually was hidden well right here when I crocheted around it but if you need to you can you can um, thread this and run it under more of the stitches just in a circle there but I've already crocheted around this so I'm just going to go ahead and give this a clip again close but not too close and my baby blanket is all ready so let's let's go ahead and take a look at this and really there is no front or back side Okay, I'll just give you a view of these beautiful colors in this yarn. And again, I wish you could feel how soft it is. It has that, that microfiber feel to it. And I think this is going to be really fun. And just the way babies like to explore. And I know a lot of uh, babies I've had, they like to stick their fingers in things. And, and this is a blanket that's very, uh, very forgiving and will be great to, you know, play with and just to cherish for years to come okay well i hope you like this video if you did go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the new things i have um, videos that are both for beginner and uh, intermediate and even one uh, crochet along currently running that's for advanced crocheters so um, if you just click that little button and you'll have more fun videos coming your way god bless bye bye